China has developed a deep-sea mining ship with a daily rent of 1.3 million. Japan once wanted to ask for twice the price? Let's take a closer look in this video. If a country wants to develop, it cannot do without various resources. In recent years, as land resources have been gradually discovered and exploited, people have also turned their attention to the sea and gradually began to exploit seabed resources. However, what people mainly mine at sea are shallow sea resources, and the deep sea area has always been a place that is difficult for human beings to reach. However, relevant data show that the deep sea contains tens of billions of tons of rare earth resources. Therefore, deep sea mining ships have become equipment that is urgently needed by various countries. For example, Japan once discovered a giant rare earth mine in South Bird Island. We all know that rare earths are national strategic resources. It is precisely because China has a large amount of rare earth resources that it can fight its way out in front of the powerful scientific and technological strength of the West. It is a pity that Japan does have rare earth resources but cannot develop them because they do not have the technology needed for deep sea mining. Now this technology is completely mastered by China. China is the first and only country in the world to own deep sea mining ships. So what difficulties did China encounter in building deep sea mining ships? How did China occupy this technological highland? Although China has a long history of shipbuilding, deep sea mining ships have tried many fields that have not been involved in the past, and there is no previous experience for reference, so they are completely self-sufficient. First of all, it must be able to stay at sea for more than five years, and it must be able to stop the storm at sea and the unpredictable dangers on the seabed. A mining ship cannot even guarantee the safety at sea, let alone go to the seabed to mine. So the building materials used in this ship are also high safety and hard materials specially developed by experts. With a solid exterior comes a high-tech interior. Its interior contains integrated deep-sea mining robots, large splint cranes, helicopter platforms, deep-sea lifting systems, water storage systems, and loading and unloading systems. These systems are the leading representatives of today's seabed mining systems. In addition to riding on related systems, it can also be loaded with 39,000 tons of ore cargo. It is not only a high-tech product, but also an offshore factory that can accommodate 200 people. In addition to mining, food, accommodation and entertainment can be realized on this ship so that scientific researchers who are separated from their families can also have a comfortable experience. This also shows that the living and working conditions of Chinese scientific researchers are not all difficult, but very humane. So how does this ship mine ore? First of all, the ship is equipped with mining machines. The mining machine can smoothly enter the seabed and level it, and then the crusher and the mining machine run simultaneously. The ore on the seabed is crushed by the ore crusher, and the ore is collected by the ore collector, and finally the ore is transported to the ship through the deep sea lift pump. After being transported onto the ship, special staff will dehydrate the ore and then put it into the warehouse by category. In the past, all China could do was collect samples, but now it can achieve large-scale mining, which is enough to show the power of China's technology. In fact, as early as 2013, China formally established the strategic goal of building a maritime power. In 2014, the construction of the world's first deep-sea prospecting ship was officially started at Moe Shipyard in Fuzhou, China. The ship named Nautilus New Era combines the highest technological level of modern marine engineering. However, the Nautilus New Era was not all smooth sailing, 
and behind it was the sad history of China's offshore engineering equipment being stuck in the neck by the West. In the early years, more than 80% of China's offshore engineering equipment relied on imports, and the R&D and design were monopolized by countries such as Europe and the United States. In addition to technical reasons, another reason was the sluggish global market. For example, when oil plummeted in 2014, offshore engineering equipment for oil development was greatly affected, and the entire set of equipment was directly reduced, from more than 70 billion US dollars to more than 5 billion US dollars. If there is no market demand, who will the offshore engineering equipment be sold to? The construction plan of Nautilus New Era was also temporarily stranded for this reason. At that time, the owner of the ship in Dubai did not pay the final payment of 18 million US dollars on time, and Fuzhou Moe shipyard was forced to cancel the construction. It was not until December 2018 that Nautilus Canada announced again that it would form a new company to acquire the Nautilus New Era, but there was no follow-up. In addition to manufacturing difficulties, the lack of core materials was also a huge problem encountered by China. In terms of raw materials, most of the corrosion-resistant marine materials in China still need to be imported in large quantities. According to the survey, the cost of corrosion materials in China reached 2 trillion yuan in 2014 alone, equivalent to 3.34% of China's GDP in that year. In 2018, China lost a total of 700 billion yuan in corrosion-resistant materials, which shows how seriously China has been choked in this regard. Nautilus New Era requires a large amount of anti-corrosion materials, and China has also spent a huge price on this aspect. Hard work paid off, China finally completed this huge challenge and successfully completed the undocking and delivery in 2018. This is of great significance to China's future deep sea strategy and the construction of a maritime power. So what kind of commercial benefits can this deep sea mining ship bring to China? First of all, the biggest commercial benefit is of course leasing. At present, the cost of leasing the ship to a Canadian mining company for one day is 1.3 million yuan. Obviously, deep sea mining cannot be completed in a day or two, that is to say, it will earn 474.5 million yuan per year just by renting out. Moreover, as countries continue to explore the ocean, orders for leasing deep sea mining ships can be said to be endless and even other countries may not be able to rent them if they want to. Japan once wanted to jump in the queue and was willing to pay double the price for this, but was still rejected by China in the end. Direct rental is only one aspect. More importantly, the construction of this mining ship shows that the construction capacity of China's offshore equipment is further improved, the dependence on foreign offshore equipment is reduced to a certain extent, and the competitiveness of the international market will also be improved, bringing revenues of more than 10 billion. Not only that, but China's ability to exploit marine resources will also be further improved. Today, China's marine engineering technology has made a qualitative leap. In the past 20 years or so, China has completed several technological breakthroughs, such as rotary steerable drilling technology, which is an innovative technology used in China's deep sea number one energy station. The cost of drilling a well in the ocean is more than 10 times that of the ground. If vertical drilling fails to understand the rock formation, the cost will rise further. Therefore, in order to drill wells quickly, it is necessary to use a drill bit with any turn at a depth of several kilometers, which can not only improve efficiency, but also save costs. 
and this technology has been kept secret by various countries. It was not sold at all before, and it can only be rented. The daily rent is as high as more than 50,000 US dollars, and the entire use process is prohibited from visiting. If you do not rent a Chinese seabed mining ship, the mining equipment at sea will not be available at all. It was not until January 2020 that Sinopec completed the technical breakthrough in this area. Similar technologies also include Invar steel technology on LNG ships, which are special ships for transporting natural gas. This kind of steel can allow ships to work at minus 163 degrees Celsius. China only completed the technical breakthrough in 2017 and became one of the few countries that can manufacture LNG ships. The technological competition in the ocean has already begun. Fortunately, China's technology has gradually caught up. Although it is still weak in some aspects, it has the confidence to catch up. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.